Hi everybody, this should really bake your noodle. So, with all the situations out there, folks, and all the things, especially in the Middle East, especially with as many trade seekers as the United States actually has, and to keep from all enemies, both foreign and domestic, there is some really big cluster bunch going on, folks. Brace yourself. Basically, Obama administration entrusted a Middle East company with servicing the president's airplane. I don't know exactly if they were just, you know, fixing a tire or if they were running diagnostics and everything else. But ladies and gentlemen, I need to tell you something. Regardless of who is president, that is still United States people's property. There were, I'm certain, more than seven violations, international violations in doing so. And I'm going to get into this, but you don't just allow a person to your jet. Okay, it's a, you know, a... I don't know. I think it's a triple seven. I think it's a Boeing triple seven, so I th or seven seventy eight, something like that. As far as what model of aircraft it is, but I'm actually very, very, very unhappy with this. And basically, it not only put the plane at risk, it put the Air Force personnel that accompany Air Force One at risk because they now have. Probably the algorithms for the codes that are used in all the technologies and such. Um, I, again, I don't know um, everything on this, but this is coming from a USA Today source. Uh, GDC Technics have been servicing uh, President Obama's jet as a contractor for Boeing, unfortunately. Uh, according to the Air Force of the United States government. So this isn't just one time, folks. This is multiple times. The company was bought in 2013 by MAZ Aviation, which is owned by Saudi businessman Mohammed Alzir. But this is like criminally illegal. I mean, this is this is beyond oops. I mean, I understand that. Oh, okay, they work for Boeing. Cool, but in Saudi Arabia, mm, no, you do not contract somebody for Boeing to service Air Force One. What happened to all our Air Force guys that service it? Oh, wait, Obama impeached them and got them locked up and basically cut the herd from the group and everything. I mean, I remember watching something on the news, and they said when Air Force One under Bush flew, there were not one but two Air Force Ones in the air at all times. And there was a collection staff of nearly, God, I want to say, I want to say like two, three hundred people. And they were showing these Air Force higher-ups going undercover in uh, grocery stores and stuff, buying, you know, the, the stuff that uh, was used on Air Force One to cook and everything else. And, you know, if it has a blemish, it has this, if it has that, there's like 10, 15 different guys that have to review it afterward. And they show just the pallets of food and the pallets of stuff that they had to buy just to keep this bird in the air. And how these guys basically had to go incognito, and one guy actually, you know, I, I I remember this special, folks. I don't remember who did it, but I remember the special. And one guy actually slipped up when he was, um, you know, he was flirting with some very attractive cashier, waitress, you know, whatever person he was flirting with. And he says, yeah, you know, we're... And uh, anyway... You know, this one guy kind of got 
kicked from the program because he kind of slipped up and said, yeah, you know, he was uh, Air Force personnel for Air Force One. He had been a new hire on from the Air Force. And, uh, you know, he was basically buying food for Air Force One before they went off to, I, I forget where it was. It was some African trip. And they showed him, you know, meeting with everybody and their guys meeting, with the staff and this and that. So this is like really, really, really bad. I mean, I don't even care that, oh, well, Boeing sanctioned it. Yeah, well, America didn't. <laughs>